today's video we're learning how to set up a flight plan by manually adding waypoints, but also how to create them quickly with the cursor and putting a route together. Ideal for the public multiplayer environment or simply adding a new target to your existing flight plan. We'll open the TSD by pressing the dedicated button on our display. The tactical situational display is probably the most complex system we've got at the moment, so take your time. Before we go anywhere, let's create a waypoint of our starting location, so we've got somewhere to come home to. Press point to enter the point edit mode, and we'll press add to start creating a new point. From here we can choose the point type. Our computer stores a database of points. Each point stores basic information, its number in the database, type, the ident icon, a free character free text that we can use to describe it, and coordinates. They're broken up within the database into a couple of types, waypoint, hazard, control measure, or target. We're going to create a waypoint, so we will leave it selected. Next we'll press ident. The identifier allows you to set the icon that you'll see on the map by entering an abbreviation. You can view a list of these both in the manual, but you'll also find them under ABR, the abbreviation button, on the display. Returning will select ident, and on the keyboard, enter LZ for landing zone, and press enter. You may alternatively want to use AG for airfield, or FC for FARP for example. Next, the keyboard is asking for free text. This can be any free characters you like to help describe the location, but we'll leave it blank and just press enter. Now we can enter the coordinates for our new waypoint. By default, it'll give you the aircraft's current location, so we'll just press enter. Finally, the altitude in feet, which also defaults to ground level, so we'll just press enter once more to accept. We've now created our first waypoint, the landing zone at our present location to locate our starting location. Now to create a waypoint of the target area. For this, you're going to need to acquire the coordinates of your target beforehand. This may come from the briefing text, intelligence over comms, or from the F10 map. You can hold your cursor over your target, and the coordinates will be displayed in the top left. Remember, you can also cycle your coordinate format on the map with left alt and Y. Our computer needs coordinates in either MGRS to eight characters or lat long in the format of degrees, minutes, to two decimal places. We'll use the following set of coordinates to explain the process. It's going to look a little bit intimidating if you've never used coordinates before, but try not to panic. These all represent the same location with different types of coordinate. Before we make the waypoint, let's go over converting our coordinates to the correct format. We only need one set of coordinates, but I will go over converting both types for use. So we'll start with MGRS. The first segment defines the global grid square. The part we're interested in, however, is the string of numbers on the end. These are the north and easting coordinates within our grid. We have to provide them with eight characters, but we've got ten here. So we'll split the numbers and remove the fifth from each, rounding it up or down if necessary, leaving us with the following. With 8 places, this gives us an accuracy to within 10 meters. Finally, we need to remove all the spaces when we enter it into the computer, like so. We're now ready to enter these coordinates into the keyboard unit. Alternatively, you could use longitude and latitude coordinates. But they come in several flavors, our computer only accepts them formatted in lat long, decimal in degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes to two places, so a conversion might be in order. Both standard and precise are formatted in degrees, minutes, seconds, and decimal seconds. However, our computer won't accept that. We need to convert them into decimal minutes. This is easily done by taking the seconds and decimal seconds and then dividing them by 60. We can actually use the keyboard unit to perform basic maths by simply using it like a pocket calculator, provided it's not already awaiting a programmed input. This gives us the decimal minutes to go on the end of the existing degrees minutes. We'll now repeat the process for the Eastings. As you can see, this now matches our decimal coordinates that we already had provided. If you're lucky, we started with the that long decimal coordinates, saving us the trouble of having to do this conversion. But there's still one more step. We've got the coordinates, now we need to format it for our computer. First, we need two decimal places, so we'll remove and round off the extras leaving us with an accuracy to within 13 meters. Second, 
whilst often omitted, the east-west coordinates need to be to three places, not two. So we're going to add an extra zero in front. Now we remove all the symbols and spaces, leaving us with just a string of coordinates acceptable to our computer. This all looks rather complex, but with a little practice you can mentally do this as you work through it, or just prepare it ahead of time. With all that said, most of the time you'll probably be provided with coordinates that are suitable for entry already, or only require minor adjustments. But it's important you know how to convert them, should the situation arise. Alright, with our coordinates formatted and on hand, we can enter one of the two types we just talked through converting. I prefer MGS, as it's a little more accurate and quicker to enter and read. Let's start. Press point, and we'll add a control measure. I'm going to use AE for enemy armour in this case. Press ident, and enter AE. Notice how the point automatically switches from waypoint to control measure, the appropriate type for our ident. Next, the free text. We're going to go with pry to describe our primary target. And this time we'll clear out the default coordinates, replacing them with either the MGRS or Latlong decimal coordinates that we've already set up. If you enter an invalid input, the display will flash a couple times when you press enter. You're going to need to double check your entry and try again. Once accepted, we'll enter the altitude. If you're using this to cue the TADs onto a target, you're going to want to put this on ground level, which is default, so we'll leave it as is, and press enter. Because we created a control measure of the subcategory enemy unit, we can't see it on the map by default. So we'll go over to the show option, coordinates show, and enable the extra points. Now we can see our target, and the free character free text description beside it. Ok, so to save us the laborious process of adding more waypoints manually, let's now create the rest of our flight plan quickly by making use of our cursor instead of coordinates. Select point, add, ensure waypoint is selected, and then simply press your cursor enter to press to place a new waypoint down beneath it. You can orient the map to north instead of our aircraft's heading by going to map, selecting orient, north up making it a little bit easier to orient yourself to the F10 map. Don't forget you can also use the pan and zoom controls between placing points, so we'll place down a few more waypoints. With that done, we can review the list of all our coordinates in the database from the chord page at the top. Now, let's connect our flight plan together. Select RTE route from the bottom. Our selected route is displayed on the right side, the included points will be listed inside it. Press add, and then cursor slew over to the first waypoint, RLZ, and cursor enter to select it. Then press end on the right to add it to the end of our sequence. We'll repeat the process for the remaining points. Alternatively, if you know the name of a waypoint, you can select point and then enter its name, and select end to again add it to the end of our sequence. If you press on an existing point in the sequence, it will be added below the point you just selected. We don't want to include our target as part of the route, as it'd be foolish to attempt to overfly an area with hostile forces. You can remove a point from your route by selecting delete, and then either press the point you wish to remove from the right, or we can select it with our cursor. You can see that our route is now linked together with green lines. You should note that target points cannot be added to a route. Finally, if we want, we can create multiple routes. If we press RTM, the route menu, we can select another route to edit or use. You can also empty the route by pressing delete, selecting the route, and yes to confirm it. This will empty the route, but will not delete the points from your database. You can also reverse the order if you wish. If you wish to delete a point from the database, you'll need to leave route mode, go to point, and then select the point with our cursor or keyboard, and press delete, and select yes. Returning to the route page, should we want to fly direct to a specific point, we can select direct from the left, and then slew our cursor over the point we wish to use, and press enter. This will highlight a green line to it, and darken the existing lines of our route. Note that the line does not follow our aircraft, but rather is drawn static from our current location, direct to the selected point. This will also cue our fly to, the flat bottom diamond, with a dot in the middle, 
on our helmet to that location, along with the direction on our heading tape marked with the chevron. When you reach the direct to point, the system will automatically increment to the next point in the route if it's available. You can also set a target as a direct to if you want a visual reference of your target area. And of course your co-pilot can use any point or target in the database as an acquisition source to slave the TADS onto our target as we approach it. We're now ready to fly our mission. Don't forget to return the map to your aircraft by deselecting freeze, and if you wish return the orientation to aircraft heading. You could spend a little time here, building up a picture of friendly units nearby threats and alternate targets, or hazards and even avenues for attack if you wish. Now there's a lot to take in, but you've now got everything you need to know to build up your own flight plan. And remember, if you've got a human sitting in the other seat, they too can help you getting things set up. Hope you've enjoyed, and take care.